So let's take a deep dive look at ways that we can place and replace images in much more efficient ways inside of InDesign. So I've got this double page spread here. It's, um, it's kind of really a contents page with a series of kind of summary images for the most part. I'd like to replace them with more wintry type images for a different edition. I'm going to use the existing layout here. Notice that we have a sprinkling of images that are in frames set to the right size. I'm going to replace all of those and I'm also going to fill some empty frames. So those are called place all the frames if you've never worked with them before here. So this frame that we have here, if you want to check out how to create frames, I've got another video on that as well that I'll link to in this video. And um, they're essentially empty containers. You can fill them with um, either text or images, for example, which is what we're going to do here, fill them with images. So normally the process inside of InDesign is you go to file, you choose place, you pick an image and you drop it into the layout and you do that over and over again. Actually, if you need to, you can go to the file menu, go down to place or use the keyboard shortcut of command or control D. Once you get to your folder, then you have the choice of importing as much content as you want from that specific folder. You can only import from one folder at a time. So I couldn't you know, pick some images from this particular folder, jump to another folder in the same dialog box and pick something else. It's got to be from the same folder. Now from here, I'll click and drag across all of these images. I want the option to be able to use them. I, I haven't got room for them on the spread in here, but uh, in terms of giving myself plenty of options, I'm going to pick all 14 images. Also note that because I have multiple images active, I don't want to have the show input options checkbox turned on, mainly because these are JPEG files. Uh, the input options isn't really of great value for a JPEG. And um, I, plus I'm going to see a dialog box for all 14 images, which is really tedious. So making sure that's turned off. I'll then go down to the open button and left click on there and it will load all 14 images. As you can see here in the thumbnail, we have the first of those images loaded up and your cursor always appears at the top left corner and it now tells us in brackets that I have 14 separate content in there so it could be text and it could be images and in this case it is just images so I have 14 images loaded into the cursor if it's the case that you see this thumb I think oh, I'm not quite sure if I want to use that you could always tap the right cursor key on the keyboard that would cycle you through to the next image in the sequence keep tapping the right cursor key and you can see the other images. Conversely, you could tap the left cursor key to go to the previous images that are loaded up in the cursor. The up and down cursor keys do the same thing. So if I tap the down cursor key, you see the next images. The up cursor key on the keyboard will show you the previous images in that sequence. So from here, if I'm thinking which image do I want to place in, say the placeholder frame in here, well, then I'll hover my cursor over the empty placeholder frame. And I would suggest the best chance you've got of putting the image into the frame is to hover the top left corner of your thumbnail over some part of the X in that frame and then left click uh, like so. And we get the uh, image loaded into the frame inside of there. Now I can see that that image doesn't fill all of that frame. So maybe isn't the best candidate for that particular image frame in there. So you can always go back a step, edit, choose undo, convert to frame. That will actually put the image back into your cursor so you can have another go. So you don't have to start all over again. You can just go to the edit menu and have another go and drop it somewhere else. So I might leave that one on reserve. I'll tap the cursor key in the keyboard here to the right side and pick this one. So now I'll hover my cursor over that uh, X in the frame and left click. That image is of very high quality. Um, so it's a very large image. And every time you left click to drop an image into InDesign, it will always appear at its supplied size. So if that photograph that I've just deposited into this frame is say A3 in size, that's the size it will appear inside the frame. I will, once I've dropped all the images into the uh, uh, corresponding frames, I will look at frame fitting options towards the end. So I'll leave that there for now. And then for the next image, well, I can uh, cycle through here. I've got an image of a, uh, a snow border. So if I again, hover over there and left click. It drops that image into the frame. You'll see a small portion of it in there. And then I'll go to the final placeholder frame over on the far left hand side of the left hand side page in there and pick an image that is appropriate. So with that one, I might go with that one actually. That's a portrait one. Left click in there and it drops that into the placeholder frame. So now I'm left with um, 11 images loaded into the cursor, but all the other frames are filled with images. So 
in any kind of normal sense inside of InDesign, if I want to replace an image, you couldn't just hover over it and left click because that would deposit the image that's loaded into the cursor into a frame of its own at the supplied size. So that's no good. I will then have to go back up to the edit menu, choose undo place. It will put the image back into the cursor. And what you have to do, hover your cursor over the image in question that you wish to replace. I am going to cycle through here and just pick a slightly better one for that one. Um, so yeah, I'll go with that one. You have to hold down then to replace the existing image, your cursor over the artwork, hold down the alt or the option key and then left click and it will replace it. Again, it appears that the supplied size are quite big in the frame in there. Let me get that, which is pretty cool. So um, from there, I'll replace the other images uh, but using the same technique. Again, I will hold down the Alt or the Option key and left click on the image with that key held down. Let go of the mouse, let go of the Alt or the Option key and then come down here and maybe add a little bit of color to this layout rather than just all snowy white colors. So Alt and left click to drop that in there and then just see what I've got left in the cursor in here. I might actually go for the uh, for the husky in there or the wolf. I'm not that uh, up on my wolves or husky uh, in there, but I'll just hold down the alt key and left click, uh, drop that image in there. And then the final one, uh, see if we've got one with color in there. I might go for that one actually. Hold down the alt key and alt and left click in there like so. Let go of the mouse. Now, I obviously don't have any more room now to deposit their images, of which there are six still left in the cursor because it's showing me. If that's the case, you can hit the escape key. Every time you hit the escape key on the keyboard, it will drop the uh, previewed image out of the cursor. And if I keep doing that, eventually you can empty the cursor of images. So um, that's really neat. That's how you can place images into place all the frames and replace existing images as well. And the next logical thing then is to look at how those images fit inside of each one of those frames. So I'll go to the window menu, go down the list to uh, open up the properties panel. So properties panel was a, a new addition in 2018 and it takes some of the settings that you would have found in the control panel that ran across the top of the screen and puts them in here. So this is context sensitive. Notice at the moment I have nothing selected inside of my layout. It's now showing me by default uh, no selection and options for changing the document uh, properties in there. Once I select an image, so if I left click on this image here, I can then go down to frame fitting options. If I just move this next to that image in there. You can choose uh, to pick fill frame proportionally. So when I do that and click on it, it will make sure that the image content inside of that frame fills the entire frame. It will leave no gaps inside. That is usually preferable to the other option, which is called fit content proportionally. And if I left click on that one, it will make sure that every portion of the image, the photograph that I put in that frame is visible, but it may well create this um, pillar box effect at the left and the right hand side where we've got an empty space. Um, if it's of a different orientation, you might get a letterbox, you might get those gaps across the top and the bottom of the frame. Now I would dare say that if you've put a placeholder frame on your layout at a set size, you are going to want to fill it. So probably the best option for the most part is fill frame proportionally. And then you'll notice that the checkbox underneath also fit. If you intend to scale the image afterwards, or you believe you might do, then I, I would say at this point, turn on the auto fit checkbox so that when you do scale the image down, if it's not turned on, if I click and drag, even if I hold the shift key down and scale it proportionately, the frame is not linked to the content. So if I go back a step, edit, undo, resize item. If I then turn on auto fit, hover over the top corner in there. I always go to the corners, really, not the edge handles. Always go to the corners. Hold down the shift key, click and drag. Then that will allow you to um, scale both the frame and the contents inside of it as well. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut to undo that. Don't want to do that, but that's that's the thing to do. Auto fit if you want to create a link between the frame and the contents inside of it. Uh, from there then, I could go and uh, click on the other image down here and do the same thing. Uh, fill frame proportionally for that one. And I could click on this one as well and uh, click on fill frame proportionally. In fact, I could click and drag across all of the images here. So the one in the center, um, the other sort of five images in the layout. And I could click on the same button and, and alter those frame fitting options all at once in there like so. So there we go. That's how you can place and replace images inside of InDesign in much smarter, efficient ways.